Cyberpunk 2077 has a lot of powerful netrunning builds, but my super secret Songbird build may be the strongest one yet. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to build your V to harness the power of the black wall like Songbird. We'll explore the best attributes, perks, cyberware, weapons, and more that you'll need to bring this netrunning build together. There will be some spoilers for Phantom Liberty, because the most important item we need for the Songbird build can only be acquired by making a specific choice near the end of the expansion, but I will give you a heads up before I dive into spoilers. I'm going to showcase what this build looks like at level 60, but obviously you don't need to reach max level to get the most important parts of the build. So without further ado, let's talk about how to build RV like Songbird, starting with essential attributes and perks. The most important attributes for any netrunning build are intelligence and technical ability. Our goal will be to max out both. However, we'll gain the most important perks by reaching 15 in each attribute. If you're min-maxing, then you will have enough attribute points to max out three different attributes by level 60 and take another one all the way to 18. This build is extremely flexible, so you can spend the rest of your attribute points however you like, depending on what weapons you want to use outside of hacking. After maxing intelligence and technical ability, I invested the rest of my attribute points into reflexes and body. Reflexes has great perks like Dash and Air Dash, which are super useful if we're waiting for RAM to regenerate before doing more quick hacks. Body is also useful to build our HP, but you could build cool instead if you're interested in stealth, handguns, or automatic weapons. But let's talk about the most important perks for the Songbird build, starting with the Intelligence Tree. Hack Q allows us to upload multiple quick hacks against a single enemy, plus a boost to our RAM. Q Hack Root and Feedback Loop are great passives that reduce quick hack costs and increase RAM regeneration rate. Same goes for Proximate Propagation. Overclock is our ultimate ability which temporarily slows time, buffs our damage, and recovery rate, and allows us to do additional quick hacks even when we run out of RAM. This is stupidly powerful. I also recommend Encryption, Power Surge, and System Overwhelm from this tree. Any other perks from Intelligence are nice to have, but lower priority. In technical ability, we'll want to max out License to Chrome. This will allow us to get as much cyberware as we could ever want for V. Ticking Time Bomb is also a great add-on to your Overclock ability. It creates an EMP blast whenever you use Overclock, which stuns and damages any enemy caught in the blast. You will need 20 in technical ability to unlock this perk. Edge Runner is an optional perk that allows you to exceed your cyberware limits. It's nice to have, but not strictly necessary for the Songbird build. After that, you can invest the rest of your attribute and perk points however you see fit. So now let's talk about cyberware. The things you'll want to be looking for is anything that increases your RAM and armor. For RAM, Memory Boost and X-Disc are great upgrades to take for your frontal cortex. RAM Reallocator is also fantastic for regenerating your RAM more quickly. And if you can't afford those at the moment, you can also pick up a basic RAM boost. For armor, you can seek out items like Parabellum, Bionic Joints, and Subdermal Armor. I also like to pick up Reinforced Tendons for that sweet double jump. For Quick Hacks, we're only going to have four available slots on our endgame cyber deck. The trade-off is that we'll get a super powerful, unique bonus Quick Hack. I recommend picking up Synapse Burnout, Detonate Grenade, Cyber Psychosis or Seppuku, and finally Weapon Glitch. You can buy Quick Hacks from Netrunner vendors which show up as this icon on the map. You can also purchase crafting specs to make these Quick Hacks yourself, and sometimes you can obtain them by hacking access points. Now in order to get our best in slot cyber deck, we'll need to complete the Phantom Liberty DLC. But I just wanted to point out a couple of alternate cyber decks before we dive into spoiler territory. For the early game, we'll be using low level cyber decks like the Tetratronic Mark I and the Stevenson Tech Mark II. Once we hit 30 street cred, we can pick up a better cyber deck like the Raven Micro Cyber Mark III. At 40 street cred, you can pick up the legendary Netwatch Netdriver Mark V at the Well Springs Ripper Dock. This thing sports a 30% damage boost for quick hacks and an insane RAM recovery rate of 9 RAM per minute. It also has 11 base RAM, which is the highest of any cyber deck in the game. Another great cyber deck is the Tetrachronic Rippler Mark IV. This deck has a 45% cooldown reduction on all quick hacks and reduces the RAM cost of the ultimate quick hacks by 3. 
You can purchase this operating system from the Soviet Ripper Dock in Charter Hill, just across the street from Jefferson and Elizabeth Perales' apartment. But our ultimate goal will be to acquire the Militech Canto Mark VI, aka the Blackwall Cyberdeck. This is where we need to cover spoilers because we'll need to make a specific decision during the Phantom Liberty DLC to unlock this deck. During the Firestarter mission, where we meet with Kurt Hansen at the stadium, we'll be presented with a major decision while Songbird is hacking the mainframe. In order to get the Blackwall Cyber Deck, we need to betray Songbird and help Reed hack her. This will send us on a series of missions that end with us ambushing a MaxTac convoy, where Songbird escapes and enters the Militech Sinusure facility. During this survival horror-esque mission, we'll need to evade a killer robot while hacking a bunch of terminals. Just outside the final central command room, we'll discover a locked door which requires 15 intelligence to hack and open. If you've been following this guide, you should already have enough intelligence to hack the door, but in case you don't, the door code is 714212. Inside the room, we will find the crafting blueprint for the Militech Canto Mark VI Cyberdeck. And after the robot is killed, we can loot a behavioral component from its cold, dead hands. After dealing with Songbird, we'll receive a text message from an unknown number with instructions on how to decrypt the crafting blueprints. We'll head to the Netrunner Yoko in Watson, and at this point we'll finally be able to craft the Blackwall Cyberdeck. I also want to point out that there is a unique SMG blueprint in the Sinosure facility as well, but I completely missed it on my playthrough. So I will link a guide by Laidback Gamers that shows where to find it as well. You have to choose to craft either the SMG or the Cyberdeck, and for the Songbird build, we'll need that Cyberdeck. Reason being, it unlocks a one-of-a-kind quick hack called Blackwall Gateway. This quick hack deals massive damage that instantly kills your enemy and can spread to additional targets kind of like Contagion. The main drawback is that it has an incredibly long upload speed, so I often find myself hiding in cover, waiting for the quick hack to execute. The Blackwall AIs will also speak to V through this cyber deck, so now we can hear its whispers just like Songbird. Well, well, another chatty construct. Guess you'll have to get in line. While the Militech Canto unlocks a one-of-a-kind quick hack, it doesn't sport the best stats compared to other Tier 5 cyber decks. The Canto only has 10 base RAM and a measly 4 quick hack slots, in addition to the bonus Blackwall Gateway quick hack and a buffer size of 12. But I think the trade-offs are well worth it for that unique quick hack that is incredibly overpowered. The Songbird build is incredibly flexible for weapons, but here are some that I like to use most. The Yinlong is a craftable, smart SMG and can occasionally set off an EMP burst that stuns and deals extra damage. Adam Smasher's shotgun is also incredibly overpowered with its homing explosive rounds. For handguns, I like the Comrade's Hammer and the Ogu Smart Pistol. It's worth keeping in mind that since you'll already be heavily invested in technical ability and intelligence, that it might be useful to lean into smart weapons and tech weapons. I also personally don't think Songbird would wield a giant hammer or heavy gun given her tiny frame, so that might look a little goofy from an RP perspective. But again, use whatever weapons you have the most fun with at the end of the day. I'll be posting an upcoming video about the best weapons in Cyberpunk 2077, so keep an eye out for that, and be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more content if you're enjoying the video. But Cyberpunk 2077 isn't just about the substance of our build. We need to have style as well. So thankfully the modding community has come in clutch with a couple different appearance mods to make us look like Songbird as well. Songbird neck, cyberware, and hairstyles will allow us to mimic Somi's iconic face cyberware, exposed neck wires, and different hairdos. You don't need to copy Songbird completely, but you can customize V to your own liking based on these looks. Songbird's outfits for Femme B will give us access to Somi's jackets and dresses that we see in various cutscenes throughout Phantom Liberty. I'll put links to both mods in the description below. So there you have it. How to make the forbidden Songbird build in Cyberpunk 2077. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more Cyberpunk and RPG videos. I also recently made a Twitter account, so if you're on there, follow me at Big Dan here. And as always, big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.